Thank you, Motorrad Hunica, for letting me take this out today. If you guys are in the uh, Paderborn, Germany area, give them a look. And, uh, and you too can take this for a little spin. And let's go ahead and take this bad boy out, shall we? Yeah, let's take it for a little ride. Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, because any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. And today I ride, yeah, the second gen GT. I've been looking forward to riding this. I've been reading about the engine refinements. We're reading about other upgrades to this machine. Uh, and so far, has it lived up to my expectations? Yes, and then some. Good job, that's what I can say right away. So if you guys want to fast forward to the end, now you know. <laughs> but let's get into some numbers here. Let's get into some details on this all new for 2020 GT or updated 2020 GT. Um, first of all, let's jump right away into the colors. You can get any color you want as long as it's black or white and you like orange. <laughs> I'm not a fan of orange, but hey. Um, now, let's talk about the most important thing. Let's get right away into the mo motor. This 1301cc is the same motor that KTM's been making since 2014. Uh, the first gen got a little bit of an update. Now the second gen has gotten a lot of updates, actually. They revalved, uh, made the, the valves titanium, uh, revised the resonator chambers, to give it more torque, lower to reduce that vibration and reduce engine noise. Uh, did I notice the vibration? Yes, I noticed that reduced noise. I guess it just depends on what you're used to. But they're improving it. Good job for improving the motor. Thank you, KTM. Uh, the transmission with the quick shifter, flawless. Let's take a look. So how is this powertrain? Well, is it better than the first gen GT? Yeah, a little bit. A little more refined, a little bit more... Uh, yeah, I just thought a Lamborghini. How much refinement can you get in a Lamborghini? Oh, the warning light just came on. Oh, I wonder what that's about. Okay, I'll have to take a look at that. But uh, this quick shifter, yeah, <laughs> slick slick as anything. I gotta be careful because these tires are not scuffed in yet. Oh yeah. Nice. Smooth shifts, clutch, er, quick shifts, ups, ups and downs. Uh, this motor just pulls. It is a little more refined than the first gen. Yeah, see look at that. It just went from four to two. Boom, boom. The quick shifter, no problems. Just click, click. And, oh yeah, this, loving this. Yeah, there are two back up, boom, boom, done. On this motor, you cannot complain about this powertrain. This is one of the best motors, in my humble opinion, ever mounted between two wheels uh, for performance. Let's just say that, for performance. Because with the download torque and the high-end rush of horsepower, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, it still does not like to be in sixth gear below 100 kilometers per hour, though. That's all. Oh, yeah. Just dig in. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Loving this. Let's stay wide. Pick the apex there and on throttle and out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, the engine transmission it only got better uh, than the first gen. That's my humble assessment and my humble opinion, guys. This engine is just a little bit more refined. Uh, is it worth upgrading if you have the first gen? No, nah, not really. Because uh, they can do a software update and pretty much give it the, almost the same, same thing. Uh, so, two thumbs up for this powertrain. No problem. Boom, boom. Oh, I love this. 
nice smooth deceleration. Nothing's rough on or off throttle. Oh, nice and smooth. Now, after that great powertrain, what's followed? The chassis. Let's take a look here. You can see here that this is your fully automatic, fully electronic suspension there. Uh, it's the same one that they had in the first gen. Yeah, it's just upgraded. Uh, the software has been is made was made three times faster for 2019, uh, and it's the same 48 millimeter WPs, 125 millimeters of travel. But down there, yeah, it's still got the M50s on there, as you can see. Yeah, that's nice with the M50s, with uh, 320 mil discs. And here's the control unit for the WP electronic suspension. And on the back here, you can see the two-piston Brembo back there on a, uh, I think it's a 240 disc there. Now, this suspension and brakes mounted to this chassis, how does that feel? So this suspension, I'm liking it. Good job, WP. No complaints. It's very easy, very relaxed, very uh, sport touring-ish, so to speak. The uh, brakes, yeah, yeah, they're the, come on, M50s. <laughs> No complaints about the brakes whatsoever. Here, let's try the rear. Uh, okay, the rear, I, 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 I don't like the Super Duke's rear. I don't like this rear brake. I don't know what it is, KTM. What did you do with this rear brake? It's, it's, it's kind of vague at first, and that's what I don't like with the feeling. But after that, then it's okay. But it's just that first initial touch, that first initial grab uh, of the brake. Okay, let's try the suspension on these speed bumps, shall we? All right, here we go. Oh, and I'm on Sport. The damping's on Sport, as you can see there. Well, that wasn't bad. But now the second set of speed bumps are harder. Okay, that's a little more harder, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, okay. So the suspension is uh, okay with speed bumps, although I got it on Sport. Which most of us probably will leave it on that anyway, right? <laughs> Just for the fun. But I can't change it on the fly. I have to go through the menu system. That's my one complaint or, or about this is, is the intuitiveness or the uh, ease of use. Yeah. Uh, you have to go through the menus to do that to set oh I like the dark oh I'm liking this that looks good I like the dark mode <laughs> so the TFT is right there with the BMW's TFT in my humble opinion as far as the dark mode I am liking that now let's wait for it to switch back so um, ease of use and connectivity, I like the BMW TFT better, but this TFT as far as looks and the layout, I do like it. Good job. Now this should go back to light here. Come on. Come on, KT. There it is. <laughs> now it's back to light. And I'm the one that has to yield the right of way. There we go. Let's go. Now it should go dark again. Let's watch it go dark. And is it? There, now it's dark. <laughs> and now it should go back to light. <laughs> Let's see. And not yet. <laughs> it takes it longer to go back to the, to the light side from the dark side. <laughs> Alright guys, now let's jump right into the seat in this back. I still like this trellis look here. Look at that. That's still liking that. Uh, and it's readily mounted for your saddlebags there, as you can see. Um, the seat here is nice, broad, nice, wide, but it's really kind of um, KTM hard. And if you've never ridden a KTM, you don't know what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> but if you have, then you're like, oh, okay, understand, <laughs> got it. Um, right away when I sat on it, I'm like, wow, it's nice and broad, yeah, it's nice and wide, but still feels kind of hard, like you're sitting on a plank of wood. But other than that, it's okay. I'm sure there are plenty of aftermarkets that you can get. This is 835 millimeters off the ground and appraise okay so it was kind of eh, on that but it's okay but appraise for the tank 23 liter tank thank you ktm for giving us a sport touring bike with sport touring range so many of your sport tours are 20 liters or less and it's like oh come on give me some range let me pull over and when i want to pull over and look at the beautiful things and not have to pull over and get gas and so great range on this thing 23 liters good job now how does this feel ergonomically uh, in the riding position let's take a look at how this thing does in the town and also the ergonomics uh, yeah there's no complaining about the Intel manners on this bike if I did I would slap myself in the face <laughs> uh, here let's let's try the throttle mapping here when the speed limit drops to 30 right here. Oh, let's put it in first. Oh, yeah. Well, now let's see if we can find a hiccup here. No, nice on off. This is one of the best, best V-twins I've throttle mapping I've felt, guys. It's, it's better than my 900 XR BMW, actually. I'm surprised I'm saying that. <laughs> and all you BMW guys will be saying, oh, there's no way KTM can have better throttle mapping than BMW. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it comes down to what you're used to, and it's, and it's kind of subjective, but uh, I'm kind of subjecting it here. As you can see there, ergonomically speaking, it's slightly tucked. My, my legs are just a little bit back, but... Uh, it reminds me of the uh, BMW 1250RS riding position with the legs tucked just a little bit. Um, but the RS, you're a little farther forward. This, you're a little bit more upright. Although you can move this uh, handlebar here it is for position adjustable, but I think it is. On the RS, you can get the, uh, the R handlebars to bring it up and back a little bit too. This is keyless, so in order to turn on the display, I have to push the key button there. And yes, of course, ready to race. <laughs> okay, I wonder if that's going to... Yeah, it looks like it's wigging out here. But it's, it's, it's a great the six and a half inch TFT. Uh, it's right up there with the BMW TFT, in my humble opinion. TFTs are subjective, but if I had to rank them, KTM and Triumph are fighting for second place here with the TFT, and BMW is in first. In my humble opinion, that's subjective. I get it, guys. I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack for saying BMW is first, and Triumph and KTM are fighting for second place. But that's just my humble opinion. Take it for what it is. Um, great bits of information here on here. you got damping. You can see I'm set in sport, street. For the ride and then my motorcycle traction control i'm on number one and also the abs is on road uh, you can customize things over here on the left also and then your standard idiot lights down there but it is it does look like your basic tablet size <laughs> pc <laughs> it's very interesting good job with the tft no complaints ktm although it is a little complicated here to like for the heated grips. I know you can stick it in your favorites and stuff like that. Uh, and then also changing on the fly your suspension, your mapping and stuff. Yeah, you can set those to favorite twos. It's just a little bit more complicated than on, for example, the BMW, where it's just got a button on the handlebar right up here. One for the heated grips and then one for the modes. And then you just cycle through them and you're done. That KTM, you could make this a little bit more simple, in my humble opinion, but oh well. And cruise control there. All right, guys. Overall, yeah, wind protection 
this, when the windscreen is in the low position, it's hitting me right about the chin. And then in the up position, it really didn't matter. It moved it maybe up to my forehead, but not over the helmet. And this is one of the reasons why I got the BMW F900 XR over this. The XR in the up position kicks that air over my helmet, no buffeting. This does not. And also the riding position, I'm a little bit further up. So for those of you who ask me why didn't why didn't I upgrade from a Super Duke R to the GT? But no, I didn't upgrade to the GT, I upgraded to the 900 XR. This was one of the reasons was wind protection. And I wanted to downsize. I didn't need all this power. So those are trying to answer you guys' questions. Um, overall though, if this is what you guys are looking for in a sport tour with a very, very heavy lean towards sport, heavy lean towards sport, this is probably the heaviest lean towards sport in all the sport touring category in my humble opinion, especially with this motor and this suspension in sport mode. Oh, <laughs> you can pin this thing in a corner and it sticks that line. With these Pirelli uh, GTs on here, the, good job. I like the Pirelli GTs. Pirelli GTs are great sport touring tires if you're going to push them. If you never push them, then eh, you'll never notice the difference. But once you push a GT on a sport touring machine, then you'll feel it. You'll know the difference. All right, guys, overall, two thumbs up KTM. Yeah, I gave, I gave the first gen GT two thumbs up. So of course, this is just further refined. That's all. Um, two thumbs up, good job. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Number one, guys, ride safe. That's the most important thing in the world in these trying times. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care, guys. Tschüss.